Let's start with the notion of a bit. A bit is something that can have two outputs, either white or blue, like zero or one. This is a bit, and the possible states for a bit are zero and one, or let's say white and blue, or let's write like zero like this, and one like that. These are the possible states for a bit. It's like a coin, it has only two outputs. For a qubit, this is a model for a qubit. It has, it looks like a bit, but it has two segments. This is a circle of radius one, and here is a segment that starts from the origin, and it has length A, and on the other side, it has a segment of length B. The A and B are, uh, they can be in any position, but they must satisfy that A squared plus B squared must be equal to one. With that information, somehow we can build a right triangle using A and B as sizes. Right? We have a right triangle, and here we have an angle theta. Uh, there are two exceptions that will not give us a triangle, and is when the qubit is like this. In this case, A is equal to 1 and B equal to 0. And the other one is when the qubit, when B is equal to 1 and A equal to 0. When, when this happens, we say that the qubit is in the position zero, and when this happens, we say that the qubit is in the position uh, one. Then, um, even though the qubit can have any one of these stages, uh, when the cube, we will never see it like this. The qubit is like in a, in a black box, right? and it turns out that when we take a look at it, then we are either going to be picking up something like this. When we measure the qubit, we will be getting like a, a zero, or we will be getting something like a one. And what is the role of the A and B? Notice that A squared plus B squared is equal to one. Then, for example, if A squared is 0 0.7 and B squared is 0 0.3, then uh, we have that, for that particular qubit, anytime we take the qubit, we're going to be getting zero, like this qubit, when we measure it, we will be getting this 70% of the time, and we're going to be getting this qubit 30% of the time. That's the interpretation of the A and B, but that's when we measure it. Uh, the, the good thing is that when we don't measure it, it's like in a black box, and with a computer, with a quantum computer, we can modify the qubit, but without measuring. Remember, anytime we measure it, we are going to be getting either a zero or a one. Let's see how many parameters we need to describe a qubit. Uh, here we have that qubit. Let's suppose that this is A, and on the back, we have something like a, a B, right? We have B. And this angle, phi, in principle, it can be anything. That angle can be anything. That's like a property of the qubit. It comes with the possible states of a qubit. Then we notice that we need two parameters. We need the parameter phi that comes from, that moves from zero to two pi, and we need the parameter theta that somehow tell us about the a and b, the length a and b. This is this goes from zero to pi over two. And then we need two parameters. We can describe all the qubits with two parameters. And it is not difficult to see that we have all qubits represented on a sphere. We do a sphere. We can put some coordinates. 
let's suppose that this is the C axis. This is the X axis. And this is the Y axis. And then for any qubit, uh, we can we can represent a qubit with this point. And the relation with this angle is that uh, this angle from the C axis to this point in the sphere is two times theta. And this projection here is phi. Then for example, when theta equals zero, that means that A is one and B is zero. Uh, that corresponds with uh, this qubit, right? A equal one, B equal zero, and then that qubit is here, is the north pole. And when theta equal pi over two, then A is equal zero, B is equal one, and that corresponds with this qubit, and that goes with the uh, two theta would be pi, measuring an angle of two pi will give us here to the south pole. This is one. If we think about, for example, the qubit when, when A and B are like right opposite to each other and they are the same, right? this qubit, right? In this case, A is equal to one over the square root of two, B is equal to one over the square root of two, and the angle between the two is zero, and that means that the angle theta, when we build the triangle, since this is one over the square root of two, and this is one over the square root of two, this angle is 45 degrees, pi over four, then two times pi over four, give us pi over two, and then when you move pi over two units, phi equals zero, then this qubit is this one. By the way, this qubit is represented like one over the square root of two, zero, plus one over the square root of two, one. Uh, we can use complex numbers to represent a qubit. Let's do that. We can think about side zero, right? Here is A. And we can think about the other side, right? this is B, and we can set up a system of coordinates. And we can think that this is the real part of a complex number, and this is the imaginary part of a complex number, and this is the real part of a complex number, and the imaginary part of a complex number. Then with these coordinates, we have that this segment can, is given by a complex number of the form x1 plus i times y1, and this one is a complex number of the form x2 plus i y2. And for that reason, uh, the qubits can be represented as elements in the cross product c cross c, right? which is c2. That means vectors of the form C1, C2, such that C1 and C2 are complex numbers. But to represent a qubit, this condition, A squared plus B squared equal one, tell us that we want to pick those complex numbers that satisfy the property that uh, the norm of C1 squared, which is A squared, plus the norm of C2 squared is equal to one. And the other observation is that since this is the qubit, huh, and it doesn't matter if we term the qubit like this, right? It's the same qubit. For that reason, uh, we have that if we rotate both qubits, 
in, comple in complex number notation, that means that if we take e, a complex number e to the i theta and we multiply it by c1 and c2, then this qubit, the qubit represented by this complex number, complex vector, is the same qubit as the one that represented by this complex vector. And for that reason, essentially, the qubits are represented for what is known as the, pro the complex projective space one, which is well known to be a sphere. By the way, the sphere that I described before is called the rock sphere. Okay, uh, this is it for this video. Just wanted to explain an interpretation for the qubit and how they can be viewed as points in the block sphere and how they can be viewed as points in the projective space.